Hi everyone, thanks for joining today. We're here today to introduce you to Checkpoint Solution for Cloud Network Security. Let's get started. When it comes to Cloud Network Security, one of the questions that you need to ask yourself is what do you get from Cloud Vendor Firewalls? First, you notice that they have inadequate threat prevention capabilities that are needed for complete protection of your infrastructure, which means that if you have critical applications, you will not be able to run them safely in the cloud. Second, Cloud Vendor Firewalls provide limited access control capabilities that are a fraction of the features and granularity that Cloud Guard Network Security provides. In addition, their capabilities are only applicable to themselves, which means lost productivity when also having to secure other cloud vendors and on-premises environments. And finally, for every new cloud that you adopt, whether it's public or private cloud, you will have to learn from scratch how to create consistent security policies across all of your cloud environments, view logs, investigate potential malicious activity, and provide verbose audit trails. Bottom line, as you mature and scale, using cloud vendor firewalls becomes increasingly inefficient and ineffective. Checkpoint offers something better. It's time to take a strategic approach to secure all of your cloud networks. We call it Checkpoint's Cloud Guard Network Security. A prevention-first cloud network security solution that provides the highest quality security across public and private clouds. Now with a comprehensive security strategy, you can confidently and economically scale critical applications in the cloud of your choice. Quite simply, Cloud Guard Network Security is quantum in the cloud. For those not familiar with quantum, it's our industry leading next generation firewall. The same software engines that run on quantum are running in Cloud Guard. This means it's simple to manage security across on-premise and cloud networks. Cloud Guard Network Security provides third-party validated threat prevention with the highest catch rate, allows you to consistently apply access control policies across your applications and networks regardless of where they are deployed and has cloud native integrations with all of the major cloud vendors that allows for seamless operations and ease of use. Here's a more detailed view of Cloud Guard Network Security's key capabilities. As mentioned previously, Cloud Guard Network Security is simply quantum in the cloud. The threat prevention and access control capabilities that you know and trust in quantum also exist in Cloud Guard Network Security. On top of what quantum provides, Cloud Guard Network Security extends those capabilities to support the dynamic nature of cloud environments. For example, adaptive policies using cloud native objects, such as virtual instances or tags, are possible with the use of Cloud Guard Controller. Those native cloud objects can then be used in your security policy and enforced by on-premise and cloud security gateways. Automated security gateway blueprints are also available via infrastructure as code to speed deployment and be DevOps friendly. Cloud Guard Network Security also supports a wide range of cloud vendors, both public and private. As you can see, Cloud Guard supports a wide range of public and private cloud vendors that creates flexibility and choice for our customers. Besides choice and flexibility, the broad integrations means Cloud Guard customers can create and apply policies seamlessly across on-premise, private, and public clouds. It also means that we can scale, manage, log, and report across all of these from one single platform. Now for a quick demo, we will use the Infinity Portal, which is a central point of our platform. And we will go to the Smart One Cloud Management where we can manage all of our quantum and CGNS gateways. Using the Stream Smart Console via the browser, we will demonstrate various flows. In the Gateways and Servers section, we can see a list of gateways both quantum and CGNS that are deployed and connected to this management. Here we have a quantum gateway for the on-prem network, a scale set on Azure, and a scale set on AWS. Currently there are two gateways defined for each scale set. If a scale out event were to occur on either of these cloud environments, CGNS will automatically detect that and respond by provisioning the new gateways with the same configuration and security policy applied automatically. This is how we leverage the elasticity of the cloud. Here you can see the status of each gateway, the name, the IP, which version it is running, and what are the active features that are on each gateway. We can see that for each gateway, we have the following features enabled for access control, firewall, application control, and identity awareness. For threat prevention, we have IPS, antibot, and antivirus enabled. Before we'll start creating new rules in the security policy, 
let's start by understanding the policy structure. Currently, we have only the default cleanup rule. You can see the name of the rule, which is cleanup rule, to indicate the goal of that rule. We have the source and destination here to mark the assets this rule will be relevant for. We can see services and applications. We can also see which gateways this rule will be installed on. And we can see the desired action, in this case, drop. This means that this rule is saying that for any traffic that has not met any previous rule, simply drop it. Let's focus on how CGNS enriches quantum management's ability to build rules. On the right-hand side, you can see the wide range of objects we can use in order to build new rules. We have network objects where you can find gateways, hosts, groups, and so on. We also have users, identities, applications, etc. All the items we need in order to build a detailed rule that will be very specific for our needs. On top of all this, CGNS adds the capability to take objects that represent assets in the cloud and we use them directly in the security policy. We will call these objects cloud objects. If we will go into the cloud category, we can see three types of cloud objects, data centers, data center objects, and data center queries. The data center cloud object represents entire cloud environments or infrastructure components like AWS, Azure, or GCP. In this case, we can see that we have an Azure data center and an AWS data center defined. The data center query cloud object, these are dynamic collections of objects that match specific criteria, allowing for flexible and automated policy updates based on real-time cloud environment changes. And lastly, data center objects are cloud objects that represent specific resources within a data center, such as VMs, tags, or cloud networks, to name a few. CloudGuard Controller continuously updates the IP addresses of the cloud objects, allowing the gateways to enforce the changes dynamically without the need to install policy for each change in the cloud. So for example, if we want to create an access rule between an AWS VPC and an Azure VNet, then instead of using network objects or IP addresses, we're using the real objects from the cloud. And whenever a new asset will be added to either the AWS VPC or to the Azure VNet, CloudGuard Controller will automatically learn that via API calls, and the policy will automatically be adjusted. Here's the way to do it. So let's say we would like to create a new rule. Let's give a name to this rule. We're going to name it allow HTTP from AWS VPC to Azure VNet. The source is going to be a specific VPC in AWS. So we'll open up the data center object for our AWS subscription. And here's a sampling of all the different things and cloud objects we can see within that AWS subscription. Security groups, regions, and now we're going to go to our VPC and grab a VPC, just as an example. You can use that search bar to help sort it. And we're going to pick one of them and use it as our source. For the destination, we're going to use an Azure Cloud object. So we're going to open up our Azure connection via Cloudguard Controller. And here's a sampling of the Azure Cloud objects that we can see. We're going to type in VNet in the search bar and grab one of the VNets. And like we said, this is just one example of one possibility. For our protocol that we're going to look for is HTTP. Configure the rule to accept. Push policy and we're done. To assist us with our use case examples, we have created an architecture that is quite common with customers. It includes an on-premise data center, an Azure deployment, as well as a deployment in AWS. The initial step is to navigate our security policy where we will create a new rule that allows DevOps to access our servers in the cloud over SSH. We'll give our new rule a name called DevOps to Cloud App Servers. And then select our source 
which is going to be our DevOps network. Instead of creating an object for every individual server, we are going to use CloudGuard controller's ability to query for cloud native objects. We will do this by using a data center query object. The data center query object allows you to create and use dynamic objects in your security policy based on whatever criteria you define. And the best part is that it continuously pulls the cloud providers in case new objects are created or removed that match the criteria. No more needing to create a ticket or push policy for every addition or deletion of cloud object. To start, we will create a new data center query object and to define two query rules. The first query rule will look for any object that is defined as a virtual machine or instance. We can click on the preview icon to see which cloud objects match this query rule. Now we will create a second query rule based on a tag definition. The tag name is server type. And the value is application. Click preview again to see which objects apply to both query rules. In our example, you can see that it applies to one object in both AWS and Azure. With our data center query object created, we can now set it as the destination in our security policy rule. To complete the rule definition, we will set the allowed protocol to be only SSH. And set the action to accept. Now we will create a second rule that also makes use of a data center query object. For the sake of time, we have already created a data center query object called Internet Enabled VMs. It has two query rules. The first one you will recognize from the previous example where we query for cloud objects that are defined as either a virtual machine or an instance. The second query rule is looking for objects with the tag name Internet Enabled VMs and a value of true. Clicking preview shows you that currently no cloud objects match our data center query object yet. As a side note, please keep in mind that our tagging examples are just that, examples. Your organization can create whatever tagging scheme you desire and makes the most sense. Now let's create a new security rule that uses our new Internet Enabled VMs Data Center Query object. Place it in the source field, set the destination to any, and then we will select HTTP and HTTPS for the services. And then set the action to accept. In addition to access control, we can also use data center query objects in our threat prevention policy simply add it to the protected scope field to apply the appropriate threat prevention profile. For our second use case, let's imagine that we need to allow one of our Azure servers access to the internet to download a file from a trusted business partner. By default, we do not allow this. If you recall from the previous use case, we had created a data center query object called Internet Enabled VMs that looked for a tag name of Internet Enabled VMs and a value of true. If we take a look at our server in the Azure portal, we can see that the tag name Internet Enabled VMs exists, but the current value is false. Because it is set to false, it will not match any rule in our security policy and the traffic will be dropped. In order to allow this server to access the Internet, we need to change the value to true. Clogger controller will automatically detect this change and apply the security rule we created previously. If we navigate back to the data center query object and click preview again, you will see that our server now matches the query.
and the traffic will be allowed to pass. And for our final use case, our server has unfortunately been compromised via a supply chain attack from a trusted code repository and is now attempting to communicate with a criminal command and control operation in order to download malicious content to expand its footprint in our environment. However, because we had previously assigned all internet-enabled VMs to be protected by our threat prevention policy, we automatically blocked the malicious traffic and prevented a potentially catastrophic attack, whether a data breach, ransomware, or even worse. So just to summarize, you have now seen how CloudGuard Network Security can seamlessly integrate with cloud native objects for creating and updating security rules automatically without requiring manual intervention for the ever-changing cloud, allowing cloud ops, DevOps, and SecOps to work together in harmony and at the speed of business. Thank you and have a great day. Thank <laughs> you.